Thank you. So hello, everyone. I'm Shuan Song from Princeton University. Today, I'm going to talk about our work on semantic scene completion from a single depth image. So let's start with the following scenario. Imagine you ask a robot to clean up your bedroom. The task may involve to throwing away your trash, um, put your cl uh, clean clothes back to your dresser, or walking to the other side of the room to close the curtains. So in order to complete all these tasks, the robot needs to be able to navigate himself around or uh, and manipulate with many objects in this room, which requires it to have an understanding of the full 3D structure of the environment, as well as the semantics. However, with the robot's own RGBD camera, what it can see is actually really limited. So as, uh, although this data provides information on the visible surface, there is still a large um, uh, unknown 3D, 3D space caused by occlusion and the limited viewpoints. And the many of the tasks here, however, requires knowing the information on those missing regions. Therefore, it is really beneficial for the robot to be able to predict the full 3D structure of the environment based on the partial observation. At the same time, it is also important to understand the semantics of the environment, because only with that information, the robot is able to put your clothes back to your dresser, but not the trash can. So motivated by scenarios like this, the goal of our work is to simultaneously predict voxel occupancy and the semantic labels uh, from a single depth image. And we call this task semantic scene completion. We believe that this task is a fundamental building block for many vision and robotics applications that requires a joint understanding of geometry and semantics. So specifically, we define the problem as follow. Uh, given a 3D space and a camera view, we break up the space into visible surface, free space, occluded space, and space outside field of view. And the goal of our task is to densely predict voxel occupancy and the semantic labels for all the voxels on the visible surface and occluded space. Prior work is mostly limited in addressing only part of the problem. For example, RGBD segmentation considers only visible surface uh, without the full 3D shape and the shape completion consider only local geometry without semantics. However, we observe that the object occupancy and their uh, semantics are tightly intertwined. Therefore, we should address this, uh, this two problem jointly. To further convince you this point, let me show you an example. So this is a partial scan of a common hustle object from a depth scan. So can you tell me first, what is this object? And second, what's the complete shape? So how many of you think it's a book? Maybe a TV? How about part of a bed? Well, what if I tell you it is none of them but part of a chair? Then I think imagining its complete shape become a lot easier. And similarly, if I directly show you the complete shape, I, I think you have no problem in recognizing it. So this example demonstrates the couple nature of these two problems, as knowing one of them makes the other a lot easier. However, what if we don't know either of them, and we want to solve these two problems at the same time? Is that even possible? Well, what if instead of showing you only this part of the chair, I have shown you more? Are you now able to recognize it? Well, it is easy once you recognize the table and the chairs surrounding it. So although you are still only observe a very small portion of this chair, you will have no problem in recognizing it because of the 3D context. Therefore, it is, um, instead of only look at local ge uh, geometry, it is extremely important for the network to have a big enough receptive field to capture uh, full 3D context information. A quick summary. Our paper is based on these two very simple ideas. Um, object occupancy and uh, identities are tightly intertwined. And the second, it is very important to capture and understand the f uh, 3D context with big receptive field. And based on these two ideas, we solve this task uh, by introducing a semantic scene completion network, which is a very simple 3D convolutional neural network that maps each voxel in view to one of the n plus, uh, n plus one semantic labels, which is either empty or occupied by one of the n object classes. So in this way, the network can simultaneously predict voxel occupancy and their semantic classes by a single forward pass. Here are more details about the network. So given a 3D space, we encode the geometry of the 3D space, use flipped truncated sine distance function. 
to get that, for each voxel in space, we compute the distance from this voxel to the closest surface. And the flipped TSCF equals 1 minus the normalized distance value. And the sign indicates whether this voxel is in occluded space or free space. Compared to the standard TSDF that's used in many reconstruction pipelines, such as Kinect Fusion, this encoding has less viewpoint dependency and also concentrates the strongest gradient on the surface, which provides a more meaningful signal for training. After that, we feed this 3D volume to SSCNet. And to capture high-level contextual information, we increase the network receptive field use 3D dilated convolution, which make use of spatially spread convolutional kernels to effectively increase the network receptive field without introducing extra parameters. And finally, the network responses from different scales are aggregated to predict the final voxel labels. However, a significant challenge here is actually how to obtain training data for such a network. As many of you may know, most of the existing RGBD data sets are only labeled for visible surface. And due to occlusion and limited viewpoints, many part of the scene is unobserved. And for data sets that do contain complete geometry, I mostly focus on simple scenarios, such as tabletop or uh, single objects. Therefore, there is no existing data set to provide dense volumetric ground truth for the complete 3D scene. So to address this issue, we introduced on CG a large-scale synthetic data set that contains more than 40,000 furnished houses that are manually created with Planner, uh, Planner 5D platform. All the things are composed of individually labeled 3D objects, allowing us to uh, compute the full volumetric ground truth uh, labels. And given a 3D scene, we can select many different camera positions. And for each of the camera positions, we can generate a pair, a pair of uh, rendered depth image and the volumetric ground truth. In this way, we can automatically generate a, a large amount of training data with the perfect ground truth label. And to validate that the model trained on synthetic data can work on real world data, we further fine tune and test our model on NYU data set. Here I'm going to show you some examples on the NYU data set. So this is the visible surface of the input scene and the ground truth volume. So first, we compare to the approach that do not consider object semantics. As you can see, without understanding object identity, the task becomes extremely challenging when the missing region is big. So in this example, the result missed half of the bed as well as the occluded night stand. And then we compare to other approaches that use model retrieval and fitting algorithm. The prediction quality of this approach will be limited by the quality of the CAD model libraries. And naturally, objects that cannot be explained by the CAD model library will be missed, such as uh, um, pillows and nightstands in this example. So here is our results. By jointly uh, reasoning about object identities and their geometry, the algorithm is able to fully complete um, the bed and also recover the nightstand. This is another example of a classroom. You can find more examples and comparisons in our paper. OK, now you know about the algorithm. I'm going to provide you more insights about why this simple algorithm can work. So let's go back to our key ideas and, exam and examine how much does each of them contribute to the final system. So first, the important question that we want to ask is, does the joint understanding of semantics and the geometry help? So to answer this question, we evaluate two individual tasks, which is uh, scene completion without semantics and the surface labeling without completion. And we compare the models trained on the single task and joint task. So this result uh, demonstrates that even when we evaluate on this individual task, the joint model outperforms the model trained on the single task. And the res this result validates the idea that it is beneficial to have a joint understanding of object semantics and their th complete 3D shape. And the second question we want to answer is, does bigger receptive field matter? So to see that, we compare the network with the same number of parameters, but doesn't use dilated convolution, which reduces the re network receptive field from 2 meter to 1 meter. And from the figure below, you can see that even with, uh, with one meter receptive field, the uh, amount of context information it can capture is actually really limited. And the bigger receptive field gives the network an opportunity to capture richer context information as well as improve the performance. 
And to see what kind of context information does the network learn, we do a very simple experiment. So we feed the network a single depth image of a desk and ask the network to perform sync completion. And then we take the output volume and visualize the top responses for, for different object categories, such as walls, floors, chairs, and also other object categories. We can see that the network is able to hallucinate the locations of unobserved objects based on the learned 3D context, which is pretty cool. So to sum up, in this paper, we introduced the task of semantic scene completion that simultaneously predict voxel occupancy and the semantic labels from a single depth image. And we tackle this problem by introducing a semantic scene completion network, SSCNet, and a large-scale synthetic scene dataset, SunCG, which together enables the end-to-end -end training for this task. And the, code is, and the code and data is already available online. Please check it out and come to our portal for more details. Thank you. So any questions? I see first question here. Um, you're training on synthetic data and testing on real data. Now, this is a bit tricky to get right because there's a lot of things on synthetic data that, you know, there's a lot of things on real data that's not there on uh, synthetic data, like, you know, lighting conditions, texture mappings, and all of that. Uh, do you, how, do you, how do you know that this works that well in, like, real data? and? Can you explain a bit as to why that works? Yeah, so uh, as you said, that it's really hard to get, for example, lighting and the color information uh, the same from the synthetic data to real data. So actually, in this uh, paper, we only use depth information, and we don't use color, so that makes the problem slightly easier. And secondly, we also uh, further fine-tuned our uh, model on the real data. So uh, the network actually sees both uh, synthetic and real data. To make the problem po uh, to make the task possible. So th thanks a lot. This is a really this is really great work. Um, so I was wondering, what would it take to increase the resolution? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear you. So so what would it take to increase the resolution? Oh yeah. So actually, th this is uh, one of the biggest limitation of this um, work is that the, the output resolution is quite low, and the, the limitation um, the constraint is mostly come from the GPU memory. So I, I would imagine if you want to increase the uh, output resolution, you want to either use smarter um, representation for the 3D voxels or increase your GPU memory. Yeah. Have you made any, um, have you made any attempts to uh, use this on um, outdoor scene data? Uh, so the question is whether we, we can use this the same uh, algorithm to other data. Uh, so I, I would imagine it's hard. So first of all, is all the uh, depth sensor we use connect. They're only limited to indoor environments. The, uh, the sensor itself doesn't work outdoor. And secondly, I would imagine um, the context information will be quite different. Like indoor is very structured, a structured environment, and there's a lot of uh, context information we can leverage. But for outdoor, uh, the, the context will be different, and maybe is harder to capture because there are more variations. Okay, thank you. Hi, how would your approach extend when you have both known and unknown objects in the scene? Uh, so the question is how we increase the number of cla uh, object classes? Or if you have unknown classes in the scene. Oh, unknown. Yeah, that's a good question. So I think that's a general question for all the computer vision, like the object detection task, how you extend it to unknown class. So currently we don't consider unknown class. And uh, the object, for, for example, the training data we objects you can see in the indoor environment action uh, to work on let's thank the speaker again <laughs> and thanks for coming up front for all the questions <laughs> it's a good start so